Hi, Mr. Hayes back. Um, went through the sampling methods after the last video and apparently it got corrupted. <sighs> anyway, so we're going to talk through and simplify and kind of come up with the major ideas from the Beyonce activity that we just did. I've got some links down below that you might find helpful um, in terms of notes and the previous videos and things like that. So important ideas. Like most chapters, like the most beginnings of chapters in math books, you have tend to be fairly vocabulary heavy, and this is no exception. So that's all we're going to be talking about here in terms of important ideas. So the first one is population. The population is the entire group of individuals we want to know information about. Okay? So in this case, the population was every word in the song was it crazy in love, right? So each word, if we totaled up everything, if we really want to know the average, we have to add all of them up. The question is, we obviously, we don't always have the resources to do every single or the time to, you know, survey everybody. That's why the census only happens every 10 years, and that's why you've been hearing it relentlessly probably all over the place, from school districts, from county boards, from, you know, commercials, all of that. Because it takes a lot of money, but it is also fairly important. Now, when you have a population is everybody, a sample is is a subset of individuals. And individuals doesn't mean people, it's whatever you're looking at um, in the population that you're going to get data from. So in this case, we took a sample of five. First five you picked, second five we did randomly, but those are that's still called a sample, and the individuals are those five individual words that we do. Okay, so population doesn't have to be alive, and neither does a sample or individuals. Welcome to STAT. All right. Convenience sample is exactly what it sounds like. Convenience sample is sampling individuals who are easy to reach. If you've ever, back in the, the late 20th century, there was something called the mall that people and teenagers would go to. There were lots of stores on the inside of these malls. And oftentimes, near entrances, there would be people who would say, hey, would you like to take a survey? Why were these survey companies located in malls? Because people would go to malls and they could just grab them and go. Those are all convenience samples. They wouldn't have to call them because they're already right there. Um, we'll talk some more down here in some of the example problems about what that exactly is. But basically, think about a convenience store. You can get whatever you want. There you go. So here, um, sampling individuals who are easy to reach. Not necessarily the best, but sometimes it will do for what you have. We'll talk more about that as we go through the chapter. Voluntary response. Those are people who choose to be in the sample. Anything that calls. So like, for example, let's say, well, this. Like the people who vote for America's Got Talent. That's a voluntary response because you're choosing to vote. So when they say America chose so-and-so to win, well, not really. The people who choose, chose to vote pick those people. Okay? So volunteer to put yourself into the mix on that one, all right? If you do something on a website, if you do something, if you make a phone call and register a complaint, that's all voluntary response. Last topic, which we already kind of talked about, simple random sample. This is going to become our bread and butter. You are going to hear more about simple random samples in the next six months than you probably will, well, any other time unless you take a second stats course. Simple random sample is every group that you pick is going to be equally likely to be chosen. So when we did the random numbers to choose our five words, any sample of five had the same chance of being picked. There was no influence in it. You would have to pick, there were what, 500, 500 some words. So theoretically, we would have, what, 500 times 499 right here. Now I got to do it. 500 shoes. I know, I'm wasting time. I'm sorry. We don't care what order they're in, so we're going to say 500 choose 5. Oh, 2.55 times 10 to the 11th choices. Lots of different possibilities. So that's equally all likely to have that happen. Okay, so the, and, the re, and that's the whole reason why we do it. Because if everything's equally likely, we don't have to worry about people choosing to put themselves into it. We don't have to worry about convenient samples. We don't even have to worry about ourselves injecting bias into it. It's like, well, we need some long words and some short words, things like that. And lastly, to conduct a simple random sample, and we're going to get more specific as we come, as we go through chapter four, you need to label everybody in the population. 
you need to randomize it somehow. Now, randomization doesn't have to be off your calculator. Um, back in the old days, when Mr. Hayes was in statistics, we had uh, random number tables. And we'll probably show you some of that. Um, you could write everybody's name on a piece of paper. And you may do this for holiday gift exchanges with clubs or family. Throw it in a hat. You pick them. That's good enough to be random. Okay, And then you're going to select. tell how you selected those. Okay, So based on that, if we go back to the previous page real quick. So this first one was a convenience sample. Why? Because you chose the words that you liked. And that's biased for a whole bunch of reasons, mostly because you're picking whatever is most convenient to you. Okay. Um, simple random sample down here. This is unbiased because all of these different... What are all these... Well, I'll get to that in a second. All these different dots here had the same chance of being picked by somebody in class through simple random sample. Now, one thing that Statsmedic does that I love about dot plots, and your teacher may have gone, may, teacher may have gone through this with you back in Chapter 1. What is each one of these points representing? This point right here is the average word length of one sample of five words. What's this point up here? It is another average word length of one sample of five words. What is this over here? It is one sample of five words. It's the average of the, the, the average word length of one sample of five words. Okay. Each one of these is a sample of five words, and you're averaging how long those letters are. Okay. Each these points are not a four or a four point two or a five point two, any of that type of stuff. It is a sample, it's the average of a sample. We have to remember that each one of these things comes from a sample. Okay. So with that being said, let's take a look. So again, you can pause this here. You already saw the first answer if you were lucky. Pause this here, run through the check for your understanding, and we'll talk about it when you get back. All right, so Parade Magazine posed the following question. Should drivers be banned from using cell phones? Readers are encouraged to vote online at parade.com. And July 13, 2008 issue of Parade reported the results. 2,407 2, people, or 85%, said no. And 410 p and which is about 15%, said no. So what type of sampling is this? This would be an example of, okay, so what's going on here? So this is a voluntary response. Why? Because people are choosing to call, or not call, but choosing to go to the website parade.com and respond. Now, the question which you have to ask yourself is, why are people doing that? And that kind of gets into the second question about why this is biased. Okay, This is biased because only people who really care about this issue call phones, or well, um, about cell phones, will vote online. Okay, They don't represent the entire population. Me, for example, I might do it. My wife, a couple years ago, had some health issues because she got rear-ended by somebody who got rear-ended by somebody got rear-ended by somebody who was driving and checking their phone. She even admitted to us, like, yeah, I was checking the thing, and boom, 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 okay? I might say, wow, I don't want to have anybody have to deal with that again. We got lucky, but somebody else could have died. And so I would probably be somebody who would probably call on this, okay? Other people who are like, yeah, whatever, yeah, aren't going to spend the time to do it. My father-in-law worked in business, and he would often say that the, the people who complained were the people who you heard more from because they're the ones who are unsatisfied, so they're going to let you know about it. So, um, why? Because they care more. Is 85% likely to be greater than or less than the percentage of adults who believe cell phone use while driving should be banned? Well, again, since this is all biased, the people who are going to write it, who are going to vote in, are going to be the people who care most about it. So, this is like 85% is likely bigger because the people who responded feel strongly but the texting should not happen when people are driving. People who don't care probably won't vote as much. All right? Very similar reasonings. Okay? This one's talking about why it's biased. This one is talking about, and this is a typical question of saying, is what you're going to expect going to be bigger than, actually for you, it would be bigger than or less than what you're seeing. Okay? Um, so then a reporter decides, hey, I'm going to eliminate this bias. I'm going to go to this local high school, and at 3 o'clock, I'm going to talk to the first 100 people who come up. What's the problem with that one? This is a convenience sample. 
The reporter isn't trying to do anything at random. They're just trying to say, okay, I'm going to talk to the first 100 people I can talk to. That's convenient. Is any of everybody in the population likely to be talked to? No. Senior citizens aren't going to be coming out of a high school. You might get some adults. But, you know, who knows? So, again, and that what goes into the second one. Doesn't represent the population. Most people who he's probably going to talk to are going to be students. Do you think high school students are going to care so much about cell phones? Use in the cars? Some people would say yes. Some people would say no. They really want to be able to use them. So why ban them? So what Parade should have done is come up with some sort of simple random sample and we'll, um, from the population. And this is what this chapter is going to do. By the end of this chapter, you're going to be able to set up a study. So if we wanted to do this, you'll say, I'm going to do this, 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 I'm going to do this. Okay? And that's the whole reason why we go through Chapter 4. So we can set up getting all the data, and then we can analyze it after starting with Chapter 5 and later. Okay? Hope everything's going well. Check out all the links below. If you like us, throw me a subscribe or a like. Comment down below if I can improve on anything. And we'll talk to you soon.